Hey there everyone, um, we're going to take a look at what's known as aerial or atmospheric perspective today. Um, so really what it is, is the visual effect of light when it passes through an atmosphere, uh, which is why it's called either aerial perspective or atmospheric. Um, so really the purpose is um, to, you know, give our drawings depth and reality, whether they're based on a real place or from our imagination. Um, so to do this, we have to understand what happens in real life. So we're gonna take a short walk and take a look and see where we can find atmospheric perspective out in the real world. <laughs> All right, here goes the very excited June once again. So when you're out in the neighborhood, it's not always easy to see aerial perspective right away. You may have to take a little drive or go to a park where you can see those mountains or hills way off into the distance. Like for me, I'm from Iowa and that's super flat pretty hard to see that aerial perspective so it's really nice now that I'm in Colorado where I can go to the park and you always know that those mountains are off into the west so uh, take a look around you in the world um, and see what you can find and listen to my further explanation and 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 take note of what you're looking for when you before you settle down into this drawing Aerial perspective, which is also called atmospheric perspective, is a method for creating the illusion of depth or recession in a painting or drawing by modulating color to simulate changes affected by the atmosphere on the colors of things seen at a distance. So just look outside at the, the landscape in Denver and you can see this type of perspective in action. So aerial perspective is the visual effect of light when it passes through an atmosphere. And the purpose of using aerial perspective is to give our drawings depth and reality. To do this, we must understand what happens in real life. So, you know, what do we see when we view a real landscape? Um, you know, features and objects appear lighter and less detailed as they recede into the distance. And they also appear to lose color or saturation, fading into the background. So this color is normally blue, but it, it could be perhaps red or even golden yellow depending on the time of day and the atmospheric conditions. So in our drawings, as objects recede towards the horizon, we need to draw them lighter and with less detail. While this might seem obvious, um, it's all due to Leonardo da Vinci's ideas, um, which have now become part of artistic vocabulary. So this is one reason why you know, the Mona Lisa is so famous, because of da Vinci's use of atmospheric perspective within the painting. So the principle behind aerial perspective is simple. As the distance between a person and an object increases, the color, the object's color fades into the background and loses detail. And then quite often the sky and the land seem to fade into each other. So spend some time looking at the landscape around you for a bit, you know, take a look from a different viewpoint that allows you to see well into the distance. Also look at pictures and photographs. So to do this drawing, take a walk and find a location where you can sit and observe this type of perspective. Decide uh, what you will include in your composition. You should then begin the drawing by lightly penciling in the main aspects of the landscape in your view. This is what you can see me doing here. And as I continue to develop the, to develop the drawing in charcoal, you will see me develop this perspective according to certain rules regarding expressing this type of space. So artists can create a sense of atmospheric perspective in a landscape using several visual tools. Value, color, chroma, and temperature, edges, and texture. The first and most significant is value, which is why we're producing this drawing utilizing charcoal. So as objects recede, most atmospheric haze lies between the viewer and the subject. And so shadows look noticeably lighter. Light patterns look different too. They're lower in contrast and sometimes lighter depending on you know, the atmospheric conditions and light source. Value is the most significant part of creating atmosphere in a landscape because even a sketch or grayscale painting can read as heavily atmospheric if the value shifts make distant objects recede. Um, the second thing that shifts this atmo with atmospheric perspective is color. It's chroma and temperature. In some conditions, atmospheric haze makes the temperature of the landscape cooler or bluer as it recedes. 
in a forested lower pollution area on a clear or slightly hazy day, you'll see receding mountains take on a lighter blue, bright blue cast the further away they are. This is because trees and other vegetation emit volatile organic compounds along with oxygen as they breathe and VOCs um, create a vapor that scatters blue light from the sky. So from the, but the receding landscape isn't always, you know, cool or a blue temperature necessarily. That depends on the time of day and the position of the light source. So during a sunset or sunrise, fog and vapor reflect the light of the sky the same way, which means they'll take on more of whatever the dominant sky color happens to be at a given moment. So other, under more polluted conditions that are near to cities, the parts of the landscape that are further away are often lower in chroma or grayer than the foreground, where you'll see brighter color along with more contrast. This is because pollution particles absorb light rather than reflecting it like the VOCs do. The lower chroma rule of thumb can also be true of dense fog and overcast conditions. When light is blocked, local color is clearer in the foreground but gets obscured more with the distance. So what you saw me do was to develop the foreground area with a lot more detail and little elements that you see in the buildings of the landscape. And so um, it's super important to create that contrast by doing that, like slow down, pay attention to those foreground elements, make them um, detailed, more contrast, a little bit more color if you were doing color, but we're doing black and white. And then as you continue, um, when you hit the horizon line, things start to get quite hazy. So play around with the charcoal, stick your fingers in there, use your, your blending stumps as well as your erasers to help you create a softness as you go out towards that horizon line. And remember that as things go off into the distance, they don't get darker, they get lighter. Um, so in order to create an effective looking space, you're going to find that things that go further off in the distance become lighter, even though they may be, you know, what you might, your intellectual side of your brain might know of as a darker tone or a darker color. Um, so in order to create that sense of space, that lightness is really important in order to show that sense of atmosphere. So this is the part where you can have a good bit of fun um, playing around with the charcoal, seeing what it can do. You know, I really enjoy um, drawing clouds. It's a lot of fun. You can add some expressive qualities in with that drawing tool that you're producing, as you can see me start to develop here. So as you see me uh, continue to develop this drawing here, I just want to review a little bit of what I discussed in the lecture on uh, perspective in regards to atmospheric or aerial perspective. So just keep in mind that contrast is greatest for close objects. Distant objects have less contrast in them and less to their surroundings. So each row of hills receding into the distance has less contrast with the next. Remember that uh, value contrast is the strongest contrast when creating spatial illusions. So colors also change with depth. All of the colors are clear on near objects. Bright colors are only seen on close objects. Warm colors also show up more on near objects. As objects get further away, the colors dull and eventually turn blue-gray, partially because of this warm colors uh, appear to be closer than cool colors. So choose colors in an image accordingly. Focus in an image also gives depth clues. Uh, close objects are generally more sharply focused than distant objects. Um, it is possible to alter this with a camera, but the mind sees softly focused edges as being farther away than sharp edges. There may be compositional reasons to soften the focus of close objects in an image to call attention to on something farther back in the space. Um, details are much more apparent on near objects because of all of the things that I just mentioned. Um, linear perspective makes more distant details too small to see, but it is a low contrast that tends to flatten distant objects. Pay attention to how these concepts play out when you're looking at a landscape. The same tree goes looks not only smaller in the distance, but also less leafy, um, contrast, detail, and focus, and not as bright of color.
Um, so as the, the trees get further away, they blend into the landscape and eventually all the tree, all you see are rows of hills flat as cutouts receding to the horizon. This is especially true on a hazy day when looking into the sun. So hopefully, you know, as we're doing this drawing, you'll start to pay more attention um, to your environment. Take a look at what you see and draw from what you see. So what you see me doing is playing around with the charcoal, manipulating that space. Um, charcoal is a bit fun. It, you know, it's hard when it's dry, I understand, but uh, what you can do with charcoal is you can block in an area and then go back in with your eraser and kind of carve out something more from the darkness. This works really well with aerial perspective where you're trying to get that sort of hazy looking space. So I encourage you to... Don't be af not to be afraid to like dig your fingers onto the paper, make a bit of a mess, you know, dig in with that eraser. This is why I don't really like needed erasers all that much because I need a stiffer eraser in order to really um, get away and, and etch out something from that charcoal space. Um, it also allows you to create a different type of mark, a different kind of line that's very expressive and can be quite beautiful, particularly when you're drawing something like these cloud forms. Um, there's also your blending stub, like I had mentioned. Um, so just work back and forth. Add charcoal, take it away, smudge it around, and blur it together. And then in the end, I think you'll find that you create a really beautiful drawing that you're very happy with. Uh, glad to have you here on this video demo today and I hope you enjoyed and learned something about atmospheric aerial perspective and um, just look around in the world around you and you can learn so much about the visual qualities of creating a drawing um, just by exploring what you see. Uh, so hopefully you'll try it out again in the future and I will catch you next time.